Hello, uh, this, I'm Zucky uh, from Sommelier Finance, um, Sommelier Protocol. We are uh, building tools for liquidity providers uh, using a combination of Ethereum and Cosmos technology. Um, and I am on with uh, Tasha from uh, founder of uh, Alpha Labs and uh, the, the well-known and well-regarded Alpha Finance Protocols. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to, to, to talk to her it's this uh, evening for me and morning for her. Um, absolutely. Uh, and uh, great to be sharing with all of you guys. Um, uh, welcome on board, uh, 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 Tasha. Yeah, thanks, Saki. Glad to be here. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could tell me a little bit about your sort of history in the blockchain space. Um, uh, I remember the sort of alpha name uh, starting to come up in, in, in DeFi during DeFi summer. Uh, but uh, how did you get? How did you get? How did you get here to to the the magical world of, of magic internet money and DeFi? <laughs> Good question. I feel like each person's story to enter the space is. It's very unique and, and I think it kind of speaks a lot to how diverse the space is um, and pretty much, you know, just bring in um, people from all over the place, right? For my case particularly, you know, I've been um, studying uh, about the blockchain and also in investing, trading cryptocurrencies for, you know, several years already. So since 2017. Um, okay. And then from there, I started my career in traditional finance, right, because I was more interested in the intersection of tech and finance. So I started working in investment banking, servicing clients who are tech companies in San Francisco, actually. And then okay. I went to London um, to do something similar. So kind of like living in the realm of tech and finance um, for, for, for a number of years, and then pivoting, pivoting more into the tech role um, as a product manager at Tencent, right? And then from there, I was actually, um, you know, at, at, at the point in time that I feel like, hey, there's actually a lot more that 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 will be that I can drive what, what in terms of this? the intersection. Um, Tencent was around two years ago. Okay. Yeah, two years ago. Um, and then and then you know that's pretty much when I started to think more of transitioning full time to blockchain space. And pretty much, you know, the the trigger point was actually with, I applied to MBA. Um, and and and. COVID hits, um, so Harvard pretty much told me that, hey, you can actually you know, defer if you don't want to go to MBA, right? And that's uh -huh. pretty much you know, the point in time that I feel like, hey, this is actually you know, a, a very good moment for me to um, really dive into the space that I'm super passionate in and then consider it, you know, really take a, take a lead and, and, and start full time there. Um, because I pretty much have, you know, uh, a backup plan um, to go to MBA, right? So that's pretty much, you know, very so that's, so if, different if, if, story. If this truly from... is the bear market, uh, we'll we'll see you at our, we'll see you in Cambridge. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So I started um, full time at Band Protocol, which is uh, the data oracle uh, yep. based here in Thailand as well. And then I was the head of strategy, so pretty much, you know, helping to drive more adoption from DeFi protocols. So from that role itself, I pretty much you know, have to be the expert in DeFi somewhat, right? And yep. from diving really deep into a number of different angles of DeFi, I see that there are so many ways that that the whole space can you know innovate and improve a lot more. Um, and pretty much, you know, I, I take a another leap again to start Alpha Finance Lab with my co-founder Nipun, um, with the thesis that hey, DeFi is going to be here for a long term, right? But how it's going to evolve? You know that definitely depend on so many factors from regulations from you know so many things right um so what we what pre, what DeFi needs is uh, more of a DeFi lab that we can build innovative products that pretty much capture the market gaps at every single moment in time um, and pretty much you know this DeFi lab which we call alpha finance lab you know will be relevant at every stage of DeFi through the products that we uh, make sure to 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 drive significant product market fit at all stages of DeFi, and I think you know that will pretty much bring a lot of um, benefits not only to Alpha community um, being relevant at you know in DeFi for all stages, but also bring a lot of benefits to DeFi landscape itself. Um, having a lot of you know useful products to to build off from the money Lego 
um, and pretty much, you know, find more ways to um, have a better and stronger financial system. So, you know, I feel like Alpha has, has uh, you know, you very quickly, like, uh, uh, generated, like, very large TVL values. Um, the uh, And you've been through all, you know, I, you know, I'm, the thing I frequently tell people is every year in blockchain is 10 years in real life. Uh, <laughs> so two years is a long time. Uh, and, and mm -hmm. like, things have been faster. I mean, I, I think ever since really the pandemic started, um, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, things have been faster. I mean, I spent, so like while everyone else was doing DeFi summer, I was doing, I was shipping Stargate and shipping IBC for Cosmos. Um, mm. that's pretty much what I was doing then and how watching DeFi summer, um, uh, being like, it's finally happening. Like, you know, we've been, I've been, we, I've been, I've been at this for seven years. So mm. it's been a long time. Uh, and, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's like finally happening. The users are finally here. And like, they're finally using all these ideas that we've been talking about. Um, mm. it's been pretty, that's been pretty, uh, I think it's been, it's been pretty exciting. Um, so what do you think is sort of, so yeah, I, I, I've been, I've, I've had like some interactions, um, with the, uh, Bangkok crypto scene because there have always, there frequently been like little touch points, um, with Cosmos, um, whether, you know, going back, I think the first interact, so actually, I think someone tried to build like a national ID system for Taiwan on top of the Cosmos SDK like three years ago. So mm -hmm. that happened. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And then I have no idea what happened with that. Uh, I don't. I don't think you, everyone in Thailand has IDs based on uh, the Cosmos SDK, but I could. <laughs> I don't think so at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't a human IBC packet, right? Sorry, what? You you have you aren't actually an IBC packet. Maybe I am. <laughs> Maybe you are. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, so I guess the biggest question I I think like like one of the hardest things about DeFi in general is just navigating the idea space. Like there are there are like there are so many financial primitives that still need to be built. There are so many different blockchains to build them on. Um, the, uh, uh, you know, there, there is, there's just like, there are so many ideas and, and like, I just think the abundance of, of, of opportunities is kind of overwhelming. Um, do you feel that way too? Um, yes and no. I, I think, I think, overwhelming in a sense that you know so many things are happening all the time right so so you're pretty much you know gonna keep up to the pace of of the whole landscape you know things are happening on terra on cosmos on ethereum on bsc so many things right and i think a lot of those yeah, even though it I, not I remember a time when i think i knew everything that was going on like <laughs> i had and like, then one I, second I, later I, you don't well no no so like you know 2015, 2016, 2017, I kind of like, I knew everything. I like pretty much like, I, I probably personally knew the founders of almost every major project. Mm -hmm. um, I like, I'd read the source code of like virtually everything that was interesting. And mm -hmm. and then as we got into 2019, I was like, I can't keep you up. And now I'm just like, I don't even <laughs> know. It's like, there's too much. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, there's like, like, you know, as I, as I say, like too much, too much of what we were, too much of what we were planning. But so, yeah, that, that's, I, 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 you know, so what, what do you, like, so are there, yeah, so there's a lot going on, you know, there's Terra, there's Cosmos, there's Solana, there's BSC, there's uh, uh, probably, you know, I'm sure someone, I've, I'm forgetting someone else's favorite project. There's of course, Ethereum, there is Optimism, Arbitrum, Starkware. Um, all of those things also exist. 
there's just like so many different things to, to be building. Um, so, and, but like, you know, your team has to, you also have to also like specialize a little bit. Um, so how, how, how have you been navigating all of this? Yeah, I think even though the space looks so fast and so much, right, I think still it comes down to what matters the most to the project um, at a given point in time. And I think that pretty much how we, how we think of it, allocating 20% of the resources to achieve something that generate 80%, right? So the 20 year rule, I think that still holds. Um, and, and that's the mindset that we do, um, which once we have that mindset, then that pretty much, you know, determine what's going to be the priority and then we stick with it and, and you know, drive it to execution, right? Um, of course, we will stay alert on, on all the things happening around us and then always see if our assumption or thesis is correct, meaning that if this current thing that we're doing will actually generate 80% of the value, right? Um, a lot of times it does, um, but definitely there are certain times that, um, you know, things in a space also shape or change um, our decision, which, um, you know, requires us to pivot quickly as well. So I think it's more of balancing the two forces, you know, one really have the, the, the internal um, conviction of what you're doing will generate the 80% of the um, resource or uh, output, right, by only allocating 20% of the resources. But at the same time, you also have to be alert on making sure that uh, with the changing landscape, that still holds true. So I think it's more of balancing the two um, to make sure that we achieve a lot of number of things in a short uh, amount of time. So I think this is a good segue into maybe we could talk a little bit about the different protocols and products that uh, Alpha Finance has uh, has deployed. So what is what what was the what was the what's the latest product? What's what's the latest thing that? Uh, you guys have come up with that you guys are excited about and are onboarding users mm -hmm. onto. Yeah, so there are pretty much three things, right? So the first one is Alpha Homora. That's the, the first protocol that we did. Um, the second one is Alpha Launchpad, which is a DeFi incubator program. It's not a protocol per se, it's a program, um, but the first incubator project is has been announced and they're launching pretty soon as well. They're called beta finance, beta from the word volatility itself. So they're you know building a protocol to offset volatility. So that's a project we have helped incubate it. Um, and then, you know, all of these incubated incubated projects will also give some part of the tokens to alpha stakers, right? So that's you know where the value accrual brings. So we see that even though this is not a protocol that we build, they still generate value as if it's a protocol that we build, right? So it's more of like a scaling way to grow. Um, our Alpha Finance Lab without having to build every product. Uh, so that's yeah. the second thing. And then the third thing is Alpha X, which is what we have been and pretty much are building actively right now. Um, it's a new product that we haven't, you know, shared much information yet. Uh, we just shared briefly that it's more of, you know, a derivatives perp perpetual swap product, but it has changed a lot of um, the original concept that we shared before has shifted quite a lot, taking into account a lot of things we've learned from the space. So yeah, that's um, pretty much So do you want to talk a little things. bit more about the, the derivatives product that you're building? Yeah, I, I can share on the high level, maybe not too much on the detail as, as we're okay. saving that for a bit later. Um, but pretty much, you know, the, the mindset that we have with the new Alpha X, right? And, and the reason that I said the new Alpha X is because previously we shared the old Alpha X before in terms of how it's going to work. You know, this is the product, this is the UX, UI, all those things. However, um, time shit, you know, has, has passed for a, some number of months, right? And then the derivative space, perpetual swap space have shifted quite a lot. So we're redesigning the new Alpha X. So it's very different from the old one. Um, and the mindset for so the new maybe Alpha you could, X. I, I, I'd love to just hear your take on how the space has shifted. Um, mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, the things that come to my mind is, uh, is the perpetual protocol seems to to be out there and getting some traction, and you know, perpetuals are like you know are, are the great innovate you know the great financial innovation I think you know the or like sort of the 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 like or product market fit from the pre DeFi era with Bitmax and then and then you know and and the way like FTX was you know 
perpetuals are what bootstrap FTX to the stratosphere. Um, mm. But like, how how is how is the the perpetuals market changing? Um, from your point. Of view? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if you think of it from two sides of uh, user groups, right? One is pretty much the experienced traders. Um, let's say the ones who are already familiar with perpetual swap on centralized exchanges or the ones who are familiar with leverage tokens. So I, I would say that's one group. However, there's, you know, a whole large group who are general DeFi users, you know, um, these are the people who are lending on different lending protocols using DeFi already, um, but haven't been in the category of, you know, experienced trader, right? They may not know too much of perpetual swaps or leverage tokens, but I would say this is, you know, a pretty large part of um, DeFi at the moment, and also especially for derivatives and and perpetual swap space, right? Um, but there's actually no protocol who's or looking to tap into this group yet, and this group will continue to grow as DeFi grows as well. I would say this group would grow a lot faster than the experienced trader would grow as well, because a lot of times, you know, uh, experienced trader may also decide to stay on the centralized exchange, right? Um, so I think how the space has shifted a bit more is is you know now there are a number of protocols focusing on the the segment of experienced traders and we have seen how adoption has been right um but i think what is missing is pretty much the next step to unlock a lot of usages from the second group uh, which i think you know there there haven't been any protocols so far looking into tapping into that that area um and i think speaking from the usages from from the protocols that we have at the moment, right? I think it's still, you know, it, it's definitely a lot of usages, but I think it's still a big leap to where it should be in terms of, if you look into the derivative space versus spot trading market on centralized exchanges, right? The gap is so huge. Yep. Um, so then the question now becomes, you know, what will take derivatives on chain to be that huge, right? And, yeah. and then we- It's we like see the-, that the- the on-chain DeFi market is still driven by spot and the and price discovery is still in the spot market and the centralized exchange price, like all price discovery has been in perpetuals for, for a long time. Mm. Um, yeah. And like, I, 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 you know, I actually, I mean, I, I, you know, this is like most of my crypto, you know, you know, the trading that I have to do just to like, you know, run, crypto projects and, and, and having been in this space is, I mean, like I'm, I'm mostly an engineer and a builder and not really a, a trader, but you, 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 you find yourself having to trade. Um, trading is just part of engagement with this space, but I still very much live in the world of, of spot, right? Um, hmm. It's hard as a U.S. person to like get access to perpetuals in centralized exchanges. Um, but, you know, I'm curious, um, and I think there's the thing you pointed out that's this this asymmetry is is a really it's a really glaring sort of thing about the current state of DeFi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's where you know the the main driver for the new Alpha X as well. You know, we think that there's something missing in DeFi that will unlock the derivative space to take that huge leap, right? And pretty much mimic the growth of what derivatives see on centralized exchanges. Um, mm-hmm. So hence, building off from that mindset, we have come up with the new Alpha X, which we believe that it will allow derivative space to take that leap um, going forward. You know, um, did you see Kyle Samani's like uh, tweet thread about this? Um, uh, uh, about margin, ma- you know, I think a really good, uh, uh, a really good uh, um, Twitter thread about um, sort of the challenge here, like what mm. made FTX like. So you you know you go back to like uh, 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 like uh, Bitmex originally and Arthur Hayes, like his whole his whole model was like you could trade anything, but your collateral is all Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin mm-hmm. is, the, is the collateral. Everybody in, gets in and out of, of BitMEX through Bitcoin. Uh, sort of the beginning of the space. Um, and we've come a long way from that. But, you know, collateral management is what, you know, makes the, you know, collateral management and, and collateral efficiency 
um, is what makes this space tick. Um, is that something that you pretty much agree with? Mm, yes, but I but I think it's there. There are more factors than that as well. I think definitely yes for centralized exchanges, right? But I think um, if you're talking about DeFi, I would say the key thing is the interoperability. Mm. Yeah, because I think that will allow the protocol usage to you know multiply, quadruple um, with minimal effort. So I think that's that's how we're looking at it as well. Yeah, that, that I mean, that's that I think is a big part of like this universe, right? It's like what 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 makes all of this so complex is it's like, you know, in the in the centralized exchange world, composability is controlled by the centralized exchange, so they can offer mm-hmm. like cross margining of project products and and interactions between different products on exchange, whether it's just different pairs or or, you know, uh, 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 lending, collateralizing, margin, all of these things. Um, but in the DeFi space, it is going to be, it's not, you're not going to, it's the, the, the efficiency is not just going to come from how your protocol, like, internally manages capital, but how all of these things interface with each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is a very... I mean, it's a very intellectually challenging space, right? That's what's so much fun about it. Mm. Yeah, and I think the an, an, another fun thing about it is there's pretty much no, like, no set way of doing things, right? I think people are all experimenting, innovating, um, coming up with new ways to to do things. So I think that's kind of leave the the boundary, you know, a lot larger, uh, which I think that's where creativity flows and and new innovation comes. Yeah, like, no, like, I think we have like a quite a few, you know, we basically have like a few things that like kind of seem to like we seem to have under started to understand how they work. Like automated market makers, okay, cool, especially in the spot market, like that that seems like we like that seems to be mostly figured out. Though being a liquidity provider efficiently, like the stuff that Sommelier works on, I think has a lot, a lot, a lot more work to be done. Um, Especially if being a liquidity provider is going to be democratized, um, the uh, but then like we have that we have money markets, we have, and then like once you kind of get beyond that, it's like derivatives, options. It's still pretty much a wide open field. How those things compose with the existing things, lending protocols, derivative, derivative, oh, uh, uh, AMMs, all that stuff, totally unknown. Um, yeah, <laughs> there's just mm. there, there's so much work to be done. <laughs> and yeah, I, I agree. And mm-hmm. go ahead. Yeah, I think definitely you know so much work to be done, but I think it's more on like we, we were all in this together, right? So so definitely one protocol being built that will also impact how other projects think of the space. So I think it's all like we're all building the Lego together so i think that's also another fun part yeah it's it's so it's so different right like traditional finance is all about like you know your your secret sauce that is that you know that no one else knows about right and you know walk down with like confidentiality agreements and not in in and you know non-competes and all of these things and i think what is glorious about DeFi is that everything is that everything is open source. That we are all inventing the system together, um, and it's really just you know we're all trying to create things together, and we're all trying to create brands and identities and all this stuff, and we're all trying to make money. Um, but there is this like shared public learning that I think is really exciting to be part of. Mm, yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's I think like, that's I mean, this is why grow. I've been enjoying doing these AMAs. Is, you know, I've been I think nice. I've been coding today <laughs> since five a.m. Um, we are, mm. we are, we are trying to get, we are, we have been, I've been, I've been coding and it's like, it's 10 PM and I still love doing these things because, you know, I get to meet new people like yourself. Um, this is a lot, it, you know, doing these, these, uh, these conversations are a lot easier than getting on the plane and going to conferences. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The old days. Uh, were you tempted by EatCC? 
I am super tempted. Um, yeah, and, and FOMO right now too. <laughs> but the COVID situation here where I am is is pretty intense, so I don't want to risk it either. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It's yeah. I mean, I think it's you know, hopefully, hopefully those people are all vaccinated. But I still think I still mm. think a lot of bunch of people are going to get sick. Um, mm. But probably all the vaccinated people, you know, they, they won't be. They'll, they'll be okay. Yeah, fingers crossed. Um, yeah. Well, anyways, we, we we should all take care of our health as well. You know, you yeah. don't work too hard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, cool. It's been really great meeting you. Uh, I don't want to keep you too long, and I'm sure you have a busy day ahead of yourself. And you can go to sleep and do it all again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Saki. Very great. Um, it was great meeting you. you. And ho hopefully, we all get to see you in real life sometime. Yeah, same here. All right. Thank you, Saki. Thank you. Bye. Bye.